Yes, Senator Shelley Moore Capito was at the GOP retreat this week. She is one of the co-signers of one of the Obamacare replacement plans and joins us now live. Senator, good to have you. Thank you. Good morning. Okay, I got to imagine there's a lot of excitement in the room uh, as you look at what you, the hand you've been dealt. You have the White House, you have both houses of Congress, but also is the enormity of the task setting in because you've got a very ambitious agenda. Well, at the retreat, there was a lot of energy in the room. When the president came and the vice president, we all realized, you know, we're all on the same team. It, it, it requires a lot of responsibility, but it's time to govern. And uh, I think Vice President Pence said it well when he said, buckle up, we're ready to go. And uh, we're ready to work to make sure that we uh, come forward with the promises that were made. And so you've signed on to the plan, I believe, with Senator yes. Cassidy and yes. others, because that is one of the, the fears, the frustrations that people across the political spectrum have is what comes next after Obamacare? If you get rid of it, they worry about pre-existing conditions, age limits, and all kinds of things. The president talks about wanting everybody to be covered, and then you wonder about the price tag. So how do you get all those things done? Is it possible? Well, it is possible, and it will be done. But I think the bottom line here is we have to look at what Obamacare, how it has been so roundly disappointing to people in my state of West Virginia and across the country. So we know that we can't go forward like that. And so I joined with Senator Cassidy and Collins and Isaacson to uh, introduce the Patient Freedom Act, which gives us an alternative, which says, let's put the choice back in the hands of the states and of the patient that makes decisions uh, for themselves and their families to get better health outcomes, to do it more efficiently, uh, to give more choices, and hopefully to control the costs as well. Uh, I think we're on a glide path to really, uh, during our repeal and replace mechanisms, to really build a better system and one that really works. You know how important messaging is right. on this, along with the hard work of actually mapping out the legislation, lifting it, getting it passed, getting it to the president's desk. How much do you worry about that? Because the Democrats have seized on this and talked about make America sick again. They've talked about how they are going to fight you at every turn, with whatever you plan to do, they say this president, one of them said, is much worse than they even expected. So how do you make progress there? Because you know the public element is part of it. Oh, absolutely. Health care to people is like food on the table. I mean, it is an essential to make sure that uh, for quality of life, for you know, living, I mean, to make sure that you can get the best health care. So I know deeply how deeply personal health care is to everybody. And I think we all realize that. That's why one of the parameters for me is, and I live in a state that has an expanded Medicaid population in West Virginia. I don't want to just leave these folks in the cold. We've got to figure out a plan that, that continues and transitions them uh, as well as those who are on the exchanges and others. But we also have to look at what this is doing to premiums and deductibles, to cost. It's not really resulting in people using the health care system because they basically can't afford it. So there's lots of upside here. And I think one of the reasons the Democrats are so gleefully jumping on this is because they know what a disaster they created by using one party, one system, not looking at all the ideas. And so sure they want to hand it over to us because obviously they didn't do a very good job to begin with. Well, you know the other fight they're jonesing for now is the Supreme Court. You'll get a nominee's name on Thursday if the right. president sticks to the time schedule we have now. Uh, Senate Minority Leader Schumer has talked about keeping that seat open, fighting at every turn. How tough do you think that one's going to be? I think it's going to be tough. Uh, I look forward to the president's uh, nomination of, of a candidate. I think when you see, look back to the election in 2016, this was a rallying cry for us that we want a conservative justice that sticks to the law and doesn't uh, make law as, as a, a Supreme Court justice, much in the, um, much in the uh, footsteps of uh, uh, Scalia. So I think it'll be a, it'll be a fight royale, or however you say mm -hmm. that. But uh, at the end, I think we'll confirm a Supreme Court justice for President Trump. We will be watching every step. Senator, good to have you with us today. Thanks Thank for coming you. in. Yes, thanks, Shannon.